Here's a little story of our building adventures at Factory Farm, which leads up to the present work with the CEB press. We started with raw land, built an earth bag structure two years ago. We built the cordwood addition a year after that. Turns out earth bag building and cordwood building is both difficult work. All along I've been thinking that compressed earth bricks are the best. They're strong, they're fast to build with, and they're 100% natural. What more could I ask for? So here came the CEB press, the compressed earth block press. I took some metal from the custom fab shop, a bunch of drilled holes, and a tad of welding, plugged this into the tractor, fired it up, and pressed the first brick. We moved on to test the CEB press in a field. We built ourselves an open source tractor first, because we weren't satisfied with the industrial tractors that just kept breaking. So with our new tractor, which we call the Life Giving Lifetime Design Life Track, we began to build. We started to build an addition right behind the stick frame greenhouse, so the greenhouse would not be blown over by winds that huff and puff quite strongly around here. We started to clear off the area, but the front end loader was not much good on hard clayey soil. We tried some disking, but the disking did not go too deep either. We then sampled the soil, which we tilled with our rototiller, to test if it would work for bricks. It has to have sufficient clay to stick together, but not too much to make it crack. The soil was go. The tiller was not our best friend either, so we needed something that would really sink its teeth into the ground. So we built the world's first open source tooth bar. Design rationale included. This worked well. We were able to mount up pile after pile of good soil, or gold for CB brick pressing. We covered the pile diligently with plastic sheeting when the weather was foul. In the meantime, we built some trusses for the addition. 2x4 lumber was put together into 32 foot long trusses, 2 feet high, with oriented strand board connecting plates. A truss like this cost us $50 a pop in materials. We also got the gravel truck in for the addition foundation. We then did a test run to see how many bricks we could press in a sample run. Last minute adjustments and we were ready to go. We moved the machine into position. We tilled, we mixed in a little sand, we raked it fine. And then we pressed four per minute, 52 bricks in 13 minutes, with manual loading with five gallon buckets. Hmm. If we could do that the whole day, we would press about 2,000 bricks. In all reality, it takes 15 people to load the machine as, as fast as the machine could produce bricks. The back-breaking work is shoveling dirt into buckets and lifting, the, lifting them to feed the machine. We continued for 14 days of this, mostly with two or three people. The hard labor required separates big people from sucklings. We learned that such hard labor puts parties involved at severe risk of destroying friendships or even families. In all honesty, the version of the machine with a manually loaded hopper is not so useful because it's impossible to gather 15 people so you're running the machine way under its capacity. With two people, we made 500 bricks per day on average. One can load enough soil or 250 bricks on a sustainable basis. That's the bottleneck. According to Soil Block Presses, a publication from 1988, the production rates of manual presses claim simil similar figures to what we did in practice with the Liberator, our machine. In our par particular case, for the number of people we had, we could almost do what we did with a manual press. That's hard to admit, but it's the reality. See the YouTube example linked in a blog for what looks like an effective manual press. The point is, our machine displays its rated performance, where we think it could get 8 bricks per minute, only when we have a large hopper that we can load with a front end loader. That's interesting. This makes me think that any mechanized press on the market with a small hopper like ours is really being oversold. Any of you CEB builders out there, what do you think? 
so we will be building the big hopper and testing the performance then. That's how we will sell the basic machine with a big hopper. So anyway, we pumped out almost 6,000 bricks in total and started to build our addition. We started by digging a shallow insulated foundation, insulated with 2 inch R10 pink foam. We used the backhoe, which was very effective. It moved from side to side by articulation of the tractor. Next, we put in the battery bank and stove into place before the walls were built. We leveled the foundation, tarred the bottom course of bricks, and started laying. Walls went up rather quickly, except when frost made it hard to get the bricks off our piles as they stuck to each other. Our soil mortar froze too, and a section of wall fell down when the mortar defrosted and shifted. We reinforced the walls with posts and started to use regular cement mortar mix. We then put on the top plate, stuck rebar down three feet into the wall through it, and started to install the trusses. We then laid the side walls, put OSB panels on the roof, and basically had the structure closed off. On the inside, we cut out, cut out windows on the back of the greenhouse and started installing some of these windows. That's where we are now. What needs to be done still? Finishing details, more straw on the roof. We are using polyethylene and carpet to line the roof, then straw. This should last 50 years. We will then put up another wall on the inside for a kitchen and utility space with stove lined with bricks on the outside. Then we'll park the tractor inside and start on a second prototype of the CEB with torch table fabrication included. We'll actually dig inside the building both to test the new CEB press, the Liberator 2, and to dig ourselves a deeper workspace that may perhaps be converted to a basement. Not the usual way to do it, but it will probably work. Well, this is our field report on CEB building so far. Open source equipment, some local resources, makes for a healthy start. Now we almost have a good workshop space finished, so some real action can begin. If we're going to house 30 people soon, we've got to move. Crash course on open source product development and engineering will be included.